Our speaker is uh, Professor John Bugri, who is at uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And uh, he's going to be talking to us about the Ghana Commercial Agriculture Program, Professor Bugri. He's an associate professor of land and economy, and he's currently the head of Department of Land Economy at uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in uh, Kumasi. He holds a PhD from the University of Greenwich and an MPhil from the University of Cambridge, both in the UK, and also a BSc in Land Economy from uh, the Kwame Nkrumah University from Kumasi. He is particularly interested in people and land relations and the implications thereof for sustainable land use and development. Uh, he has done quite a lot of research looking at the political economy and the uh, implications of changes in access to and use of land, resources on gender and on livelihood and on sustainability. Other areas of research include looking at land tenure, and policy issues in terms of poverty reduction and urban uh, and poverty reduction in agrarian and urban uh, communities. And he has published extensively in all these areas. Thank you. Um, good morning, colleagues, and welcome to my presentation. Um, I'm really taxed with talking about GCAP, but as a researcher, I've tried to be a bit savvy there are more people qualified to talk about GCAP than I am in this room. So I'm kind of qualifying it to what I have done for GCAP together with other colleagues as in what GCAP is doing to create tools that will enable responsible agri-investment in the country. If you look at the international scene, a lot has been done regarding what we ought to be doing to ensure that there are responsible investors in the agri-sector. To that extent, we have come to the understanding that we need to become context-specific if they are to be operationalized. I'm talking here about the VGs and the PRIZE and the World Bank safeguards and the IFC standards. In that regard, if you look at the landscape or land governance of the country, I want to, in an analytical framework of four Cs, state that there is what we call consensus, confusing, contestations, and conflicts. Within this 4C framework, how might I illustrate them? Consensus, yes, we all agree that in the country, the traditional land sector is the highest in percentage terms. In respect of confusing, we don't clearly know what exactly their role is because it is evolving. Are they fiduciary in terms of holding the land for the entire community or are they proprietary in terms of being able to sell the land of themselves and pocket the money? We have some element of confusion there. Within that confusion box, we have contestations and counter contestations because the land is a source of livelihood. And sometimes that will generate or degenerate into full blown conflicts. Nonetheless, agri investments are very, very important if we have to make any headway as an economy and the potential benefits are as depicted together with the risks. How do we get that carried out? That is where GCAP comes in as a multi-donor World Bank USAID supported program or project to deliver on responsible agri-investments and other things at the commercial scale. We, and I'm talking about Landesa, haven't won a bid to undertake this consultancy, decided to work on what the terms of reference even asked was, and that was identify practical recommendations which actually would ensure socially responsible, economically rewarding, as well as environmentally friendly agri-investment in the country. Specific tasks are as follows. I really don't think there will be much time to run through all of them because they kind of laugh till into the policy context, the technical context, as well as the operational context. So we had to do assessment of the legal policy framework of the country, the leasehold structures that exist traditionally, and then also come out with innovative practices. Those specific tasks continue, and I would just, because of time, 
scale through them to this point. What I'm trying to focus on is what the model lease agreement is all about as a tool and what the community investment guidelines also are as a tool. Research methodology, we built a solid team that undertook the work and I don't have to spend my time there. The key findings, I want to categorize them into two. We came out with the conclusion that there was a weak policy, institutional and legal framework in the country when it came specifically to agri-investments as the subject area. And the specific issues are embodied over the incomplete policy framework. We have complex contradictory legal regime, insecure land rights, insufficient legal regulatory and safeguards, lack of coordination, insufficient institutional, financial, and human capacity, as well as sufficient, lack of sufficient clarity to approaches for land registration. Now, within this context, what I want to highlight is this, that if you don't have, or if you do have an approach that is not uh, very much gender sensitive, i.e. a gender neutral approach to issues in land, then you cannot expect to have outcomes that are also gender sensitive. We need to take affirmative action. Beyond that, the second area was there is no capacity for the enforcement of environmental legislations in the country. And that is really very important if we are talking about equitable agri-investments as an area. What then do we have to do to create a tool that to translate in practical terms how to achieve socially responsible, economically rewarding, and environmentally friendly investments in the agri-sector. We came out with this model list in the way that we have categorized it into 24 provisions, but these are critical elements and limitations that we are warning before the implementation. The elements are that it contains a unique and innovative provision distinguishing it from traditional lease form. It incorporates best practice, reflects the variance of land tenure, and then also it has alternative terms and provisions that communities would want to choose from. The limitations are set to the right. It's not a substitute for fair and equitable negotiation. That has to actually be undertaken. And it should be used verbatim. We're also encouraging that effective use requires ongoing community engagement, as well as that step of a model list is only one in a very long process. That is still reflecting what the model list is. And I'm now going into the video sections. Section one of the list is actually on parties and recitals. For communities and investors, we need to know who they are entering into that kind of contractual relationship. Then we are talking about section two as defining and interpreting key terms that are applied in that particular model list context. Then the location of the land would have to be very well described because you need to know what the subject matter is by location and description. Indeed, anybody conversant with lease arrangements would have to agree that there must be a term and that particular term or duration has to be specified. But we also had section five dealing with the grant of rights. What rights are specifically being conveyed would have to be specifically made to the parties to know. And the key thing is section six, financial compensation. We've talked about economically rewarding and in that context, Land is a primary asset of production that you are taking from a commodity. In that regard, you would have to compensate beyond just the fact that you are buying a market commodity. To that extent, we give optional areas for consideration, and these were annual fixed payment. We also had areas to do with percentages of gross revenue so that the communities are being compensated with respect to a percentage of the company's gross earnings, as well as consideration was given to something that was referred to this morning, and it was the case of equity in use of land in arrangements like this. But it is actually left to the community to pick and choose what they want. Beyond these financial compensations, we talked about non-monetary benefits. That has to build capacity. So employment and training, outgrowth were very much suggested for consideration by communities. Other forms of compensation, 
corporate social responsibility. That has to be very much highlighted in the company's engagement with the community where the land is located. And communication is a very key strategy if there is going to be avoidance of dispute or at least minimization of dispute. So we recommended that there has to be a very well worked out communication package in that particular agreement situation. Then we also did recommend a community land management committee. This is where the gender dimension played out very well, that numbers of committee members should necessarily include women to a reasonable number dependent upon the community that is involved. So within this five-phase framework, we have got community investor government roles assigned all through to the fifth stage, and I'm just now skipping through for want of time, but we request that you do read. Then we would come to what I consider the conclusion, implementation, and next steps. We think that there is potential for improved agri-investment in Ghana, notwithstanding the complex nature of the land question. And in that regard, any chance of responsible agri-investment in the country, however, has to be anchored on yet another set of four C words. Those, I now want them to be consultation, cooperation, collaboration, and coordination. Whatever set of recommendations that we are going to make going forward, if they don't anchor on these four C frameworks, we're not going to go far. And in that respect, we have got these specific recommendations which you would find have very well been drawn and linked to the four C's I have just said you need to pay attention to. Thank you.